All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Stevenson, coming at you with a special full event preview. We're going to be talking about Invicta FC number 39, coming at you this Friday, February 7th, from Memorial Hall in Kansas City, Kansas. Seven bouts topped off by an atom weight title fight. Uh, let's get down to it. First fight's going to be at Bantamweight. Christina, the Predator, Pettigrew, coming in 1-0, and taking on Monica Franco, also coming in 1-0. and uh, Pettigrew coming off her successful pro debut in Combate Americas about a month and a half ago. Franco had her lone fight about four and a half years ago. Uh, let's see. Don't really have anything on Franco other than she's from Hawaii. Trains out Jesus is Lord Jim alongside um, Rachel Ostovich. Pettigrew is listed at, with a height of 5 feet, 7 inches, 170 centimeters tall. I'll admit, I don't know anything about either of these two. Really don't need to know anything other than Franco hasn't fought in four and a half years. And they're bringing her in against somebody that just fought a month and a half ago. My money is going to be on Pettigrew to win this, just based on activity alone. Which moves us along to the next fight, a atom weight bout between Jillian Lionheart DeCorso and Linda F109 Mihalik, possibly one of the worst nicknames ever. Uh, DeCorsi's coming in with a record of 3-2. and two. Mihalik is 2-0. and oh. DeCorsi's coming off a win over Katie Perez in CFFC about two months ago. Uh, Mihalik coming off a win over Maris, Marissa Messer Belenkia and in Invicta three months ago. Uh, Mihalik's the older fighter, 37 years to DeCourcy's 35, so neither of these two are spring chickens, particularly in such a light weight class. Uh, Mihalik's one inch taller, 5 feet 3 inches, 160 centimeters, to DeCourcy's 5 feet 2 inches, 157 centimeters. Don't have a reach available for DeCourcy. Mihalik is listed at 64 inches. Uh, DeCourcy has had some ups and downs. Like before her last win in CFFC, she had two straight losses in Invicta to Elisa Zapatella and Kelly D'Angelo. Uh, Mihalik's on her two-win streak as a pro. I'm going to go with DeCourcy on this based on the experience factor, and the age factor. So we're going with the Lionheart DeCourcy to win this one. Next up, a flyweight belt between Aaron Blanchfield and Victoria Leonardo. Cold-blooded Blanchfield versus Fury Leonardo. Blanchfield coming in with a record of 4-1. and one. Leonardo coming in with a record of, an official record of 6-1. and one. Uh, let's see, Blanchfield coming off a win in CFFC seven months ago, preceded by a loss to Tracy Cortez in the Contender Series. Or no, I'm sorry, in Invicta a year ago. Leonardo coming off a loss to Miranda Maverick via decision at Invicta's Phoenix Series 2 and had a really fun like Fight of the Year contender win against Stephanie Geltmacher a few months before that. Don't have an age available for Leonardo on Tapology. Blanchfield's 20 years old. Leonardo's 1 inch taller, 5 feet 5 inches, 165 centimeters, to Blanchfield's 5 feet 4 inches, 163 centimeters. Uh, Blanchfield, however, has a 2 inch reach advantage, 68 inches, 173 centimeters, to Leonardo's 66 inches, 168 centimeters. So this fight, if it stays on the feet, I can see Leonardo winning it. Leonardo is a heavy-handed slugger, very tough on the feet. On the ground, the jiu-jitsu of Blanchfield is always very impressive. She struggles a little bit against stronger uh, wrestlers who can hold off the jiu-jitsu that she puts on. My pick on this one is Blanchfield. I feel that the fight is eventually going to hit the ground, and that's where Blanchfield shines over Leonardo. Now, 
of course, she has to get it to the ground against Leonardo, who I already said is very good on feet, tough, heavy-handed, and decent takedown defense as well. So my prediction is Blanchfield, but, man, she is going to have to work for this victory. And I won't be surprised if I'm proven wrong here. That moves us up to an atom weight bout. Alicia half pint Zapatella taking on the firefighter Kelly D'Angelo. Zapatella coming in five and two. D'Angelo coming in four and two. Now Zapatella's on a bit of a skid. She has losses to Kana Asakura and Viviani Perea last year. Perea, of course, missed weight. Before that, she was undefeated as a pro. D'Angelo is on a two-fight streak uh, over Jillian DeCourcy and Lindsey Van Zant after coming moving down from uh, strawweight. She started out of strawweight. She's moved down to atom weight. Uh, let's see. D'Angelo is the older fighter by nine years, 33 to 24 for Zapatella. D'Angelo actually missed weight last time. She weighed in at 108.8. Let's see. D'Angelo's the taller fighter. 5 feet 2 inches, 157 centimeters to Zapatella's 4 feet 11 inches, 150 centimeters. D'Angelo will also have a reach advantage. 63 inches, 167, excuse me, 160 centimeters whereas Zapatella's reach is only 60 inches, 152 centimeters. So this comes down to, can D'Angelo keep Zapatella off of her from getting the takedowns? And I think she can. She's got the height. She has the reach. If she employs a stiff jab the way that Perea and Asa, Kana Asakura did, Zapatella is in some serious trouble. If she can't, and Zapatella can get on the inside and use her heavy hands and then her takedowns, then D'Angelo is in trouble. This is a tough one to pick. I mean, they're both very good, both underrated fighters. Uh, Zapatella, of course, you know, coming off those two losses, she's going to be coming in very hungry to prove herself. But D'Angelo has looked beastly since moving down to Adam weight. So like I said, if it comes down to really how good is uh, D'Angelo D'Angelo's jab, and can she make weight too, that, that could play a part. Uh, I'm going with Kelly D'Angelo to win. I think Zapatella is Zapatella is a darn good fighter, but she is very small, even for Adam weight, and anyone that can strike with her and keep her on the outside is going to have a fairly easy time. Not an easy time with her, but she's going to have a hard time with anybody that can do that, I should say. So my pick for this one is going to be Kelly D'Angelo. That moves us up to a flyweight bout. Shanna Young, the Shanimal, coming in on short notice, taking on Diana Torquato of Brazil. Young coming in 7-2, and two, coming off a win over Mayu Suatama three months ago, preceded by a loss to Miranda Maverick at the Phoenix Series 2 one-night tournament. Torquato coming off a loss in her, oh, not her Invicta debut, her second fight, to Deanna Bennett, no shame there, four months ago. Uh, before, before that, she was coming off a win over Milana Dudaeva via split decision. Uh, Torquato's the older fighter, 29, Years to Young's 28. Uh, Young is the taller fighter, 5 feet 7 inches, 170 centimeters, to Torquato's 5 feet 5 inches, 165 centimeters. Looks like Young will also have a reach advantage, 68 inches, 173 centimeters, or excuse me, 173 centimeters, to Torquato's 65 Point seven inches, 167 centimeters. I did not do, I'll admit, I didn't do my homework on this fight as much, mostly because of the late change. Torquato doesn't have the greatest of records. 
She does have a win over Duda Ava, but that was only a split. She got submitted by Deanna Bennett. Now, Young is coming in late, but she's got some nice wins on her record. The two wins over... Uh, Swatama. Mm. Yeah, this is a hard one. Even though it's short notice, I think that Young has been there in the cage against overall better competition. Even in her losses, have come to better competition than Torquato has faced down in Brazil. And even though she's coming in on short notice, I'm taking Young to win this based on the strength of schedule. That moves us up to the co-main event of the evening, also at flyweight. Pearl, the Shy town Princess Gonzalez, taking on Miranda, Fear the Maverick. Uh, Gonzalez coming in 10 and 4. Maverick coming in 6 and 2. Uh, Gonzalez coming off a win over Brogan Walker Sanchez three months ago, her first fight since her loss to Vanessa Porto almost a year ago, where she dropped a technical decision in a title fight. Maverick coming off a big one night series of wins, winning the Phoenix Series 2, avenging her, loss, her last loss to Deanna Bennett a year ago. Um, that was back in September. Let's see. Gonzalez is the older fighter by 11 years. 33 to Mavericks 22. Gonzalez is 1 inch taller, 5 feet 4 inches, 163 centimeters, to Mavericks 5 feet 3 inches, 160 centimeters. Uh, Gonzalez, however, has a 3 inch reach advantage, 68 inches, 173 centimeters, to Mavericks 65 inches, 160 centimeters. Five centimeters. So both are fairly well-rounded fighters, but I think both of them do better work on the ground. Gonzalez, I would have to say, does have the big fight experience. She fought twice, I believe, in the UFC. Yep, twice before coming down to Invicta. Now, she was a straw weight first and then came down to Invicta, had like one fight at straw weight and then went up to uh, flyweight and won the, or excuse me, won her way to a title shot. Uh, of course, Maverick does have that, a lot of ex recent, more recent experience. She, uh, she's been fighting more recently. She fought multiple times last year. Uh, I got to go with Gonzalez on this one. I think her, the big fight experience, the tougher fight experience, like she has championship fight experience that Maverick does not. I think she's also stronger where in the areas of the game where Maverick is at her best as well. So I'm going with Gonzalez. I think she's a stronger grounder, ground fighter than Maverick is. Uh, she trains out of the 10th planet in, was it San Diego? With like a den of killers in the grappling department. She's been working on her overall game. I just see Gonzalez is coming up better than Maverick here. Who is a promotional favorite for Invicta. Uh, so that brings us to the main event. Adam Waite Championship fight. Jin Yu Fry taking on Ashley Smashley Cummins. Now, this is a rematch from. Let me see. A rematch from July of 2017, where Yu Fry came out via unanimous decision. Since then, Jin lost, dropped about to Sahi Ham. Got two wins over Mina Grusender. And then dropped a fight to Ayaka Hamasaki. So Jin's been more active. But with mixed results. Whereas Cummins has had two fights since then. She won a unanimous decision over Stephanie Alba. And then 
had a decision over Jessica Delboni a little over a year ago, year two months ago. Let's see. Yu Fry is the older fighter, 34 years to Cummins, 32. Uh, they are the same height, 5 feet 3 inches, 160, 161 centimeters. Um, Jen has a 4 inch reach advantage, though, 65 inches, 165 centimeters to Cummins' 61 inches, 155 centimeters. So. I feel that this fight is going to have the same result as the last time. I just think that Jin is going to outwork Cummins throughout the fight. Uh, just keep up a slightly higher work rate. Um, now Cummins has got, moved camp since their last fight. She's moved out to uh, California. I think she's out at 10th Planet San Diego as well. Uh, Hasn't had as much time to really, like, actual fight experience with them yet. Whereas Jen has been pretty much on the same level. Yeah, I'm just going to go with Jin Fry here by probably decision. I, th I, I just think she'll outwork Cummins here. I think it'll be a good fight. I think it'll be... Uh, Nothing like too exciting, but I think it'll be a good fight with a steady uh, rate from both fighters with Jin just putting out a slightly higher rate of everything to get by. Uh, so we're going with Jin Yu Fry to retain her title and remain arguably number three atom weight in the world here. Mm, excuse me. All right, so that is it. Invicta FC number 39, Fry versus Cummins 2. Those are my picks. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Of course, the thumbs ups are always appreciated. And hey, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to WMMAC now, the best, fastest growing women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. And we'll see you next time.